Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game A Brazen Crown, currently on Kickstarter. This is a game set in the Morkborg universe. It plays two to four players, takes roughly about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in A Brazen Crown, you are playing as one of many lost souls, and your objective is to gather unique decks, put them together, and then face off against your opponents. You're trying to reduce their HP to zero, or make them take the Brazen Crown and get to seven points, or if you can empty your opponent's deck, and then when they draw a card, there's no cards, you win the game. And this game plays as kind of an LCG, living card games type, where you're going to be getting all the cards you need in the box right away, and you'll have all the customization you'll need just along with everybody else as well. Choosing your soul and your decks, drawing five cards and beginning play, placing down certain types of monsters and trap cards, playing spells from your hand and equipping your monsters, as well as unique tokens in the game that you'll be acquiring as you place down characters. This game might seem very familiar because it does have some similarities to games like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, and others, but it's its own unique little twist as well, so familiarity with a lot of differences. So let's go ahead and get into the game. Uh, Brazen Crown. We'll talk about it and how it is played and set up, and of course what I think about it. Setting up the game, A Brazen Crown, is quite simple. The first thing you will do is pick a Lost Soul, and then you are going to pick two class decks of 25 cards based on that Lost Soul. So if you have a sword and a wand for your uh, specific classes on your Lost Soul, you'll get a sword and a wand deck, and you'll shuffle those together. Then you'll also pick a Forbidden deck. This is a deck that is without side of your class structure, in which case you'll be drawing from those cards sometimes during the game. Um, you're also going to go ahead and have the last player gather um, the crown, as well as draw a card and add the misery of the Brazen Crown to one. Uh, then everybody is also going to get a scapegoat card. This is a card they set aside and they'll be able to use at the end of every single round. You're going to get three coins that you're going to get uh, starting face down and every round you'll increase them. So the first round you're going to have one coin, the second you'll get two, and the third round you'll keep three. And then for the rest of the game you'll have three coins, similar to Hearthstone, and everybody's going to start with 20 HP. Pick five cards from your deck, and then the first player begins by drawing a card from their deck. A turn in Brazen Crown is simple. You'll draw a card, replenish coins based on the round number, play any cards you'd like, activate any abilities on any of your different types of monsters and other types of effects that you have on the field, and then you can declare attacks. Remember that when you place monsters down, their first turn, most of them cannot attack. You'll have to wait until the next turn. After you've played all the cards you would like in any order, and you can come back, you can have an attack, you can place a card, play another attack, play another card, uh, so on and so forth, to the point where it doesn't really matter in what order you do any of these things. But then after you've done with everything, you're going to place your scapegoat card. You'll place it on any of your minions, and that will protect you from taking damage. Because in this game, when you attack, you are actually able to attack any target you'd like, unless there's a scapegoat card on a target. In which case, you have to kill that card before you can attack any other target or player. You can also then give the Brazen Crown to another player if you manage to do damage to them with a minion. If you didn't, however, you're going to draw a card and increase the misery level of the crown by one. Remember though, if that crown reaches seven, it's going to explode on you and you're going to lose the game. Then you'll discard down to five cards and pass the turn, and rinse and repeat. Have the next player draw a card, replenish their coins, uh, play any cards, activate abilities, and attack as much as they would like based on what they have available to them. Monsters can only attack once each unless they say otherwise. You can play trap cards down and then flip them over for their cost whenever an effect requires them to activate or you want them to activate. And of course, certain things like artifacts and equipment you can play down as well. Some of them require charge counters, similar to Magic the Gathering, and others are going to be things that equip to creatures that give them more powerful attacks or defense. And when those creatures die, the equipment go uh, uh, back to your hand as opposed to the other graveyard. So you're not going to lose equipment when you play them. And then once again, playing down your scapegoat card, which will always remain with you regardless of whether it's on a monster or not. And keep Keeping that monster protecting you from taking that damage. And then once again, checking to see do you have the brazen crown, did you do damage to your opponent, and whether or not it needs to increase or not, and then passing the turn by discarding down to five. It's a pretty simple game, and it goes on from there. Let's discuss what I think about it. So a brazen crown takes place in the Morkborg universe, and for the first thing I've noticed with this game is what they said is you can basically add on and make your own things to this game. It's kind of like a, a living game that allows you to uh, create more content with it if you would like, which is really 
really cool. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the Morkborg universe, but from what I've gathered, it's kind of like a, a role-playing game system, which is pretty cool. Uh, but this is a a card game. This is like a living card game. This functions kind of like Android, uh, but with unique stylizations that remind me of things like Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, things like Hearthstone and Magic, and kind of they're all put together in unique little ways, but, but different as well. Like, for instance, if you're a Hearthstone player, you'll know that you're going to start getting these little blips of energy that you can use every round. Uh, as you go up to, like, I believe, eight around eight or nine, you'll get more and more energy. So round one is one, round two is two, three, and then four, and then five. In this one, though, it's just three. You'll go one, two, three, and then you can just keep with three for the rest of the game. And most of the cards are cheap. I mean, you're not going to get cards that cost more than three for the most part. Uh, sometimes you're going to be able to get more energy, but for the most part, the cards are just going to stick around that three energy benchmark. Uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! aspect is trap cards. You'll be putting cards face down. These, these cards are not paid for, and then you can flip them when they are needing to be activated, and you can pay the cost in order to activate the card when the card allows you to do so. Uh, there's Magic the Gathering aspects to it as well. You're going to have things like uh, Frenzy, and I mean, I'm just basically, they, Magic the Gathering terms for most of you who've played uh, these type of games, you're going to know like there's there's uh, Trample, there's going to be um, the ability to uh, haste your creature, creatures are going to get certain 1-1 one -one counters on them, um, and so on and so forth, lifelink, etc. Basically, if you haven't played Magic, it's just keywords on creatures that are going to give those creatures special effects, like you gain life equal to the amount of damage they deal, or this creature kills another creature regardless of what happens to it, etc, etc. And that's very familiar in Magic terms. You can't attack with a creature in general when you play it, you have to wait to the next turn, thusly giving the second player an allotted amount of time to protect themselves from your attack. What makes this game unique, or very different in fact though, is that you're going to be getting a scapegoat card. And um, you're basically not forced uh, to play it down if you don't want to, but the only thing with the scapegoat is it's basically like a taunter. It's a card that forces your opponent's uh, minions to kill it before killing anything else. And in this game, you can hit uh, multiple different targets with multiple different creatures. And if you want, and there's no skateboard, scapegoat left on your opponent's side of the field, you can have all your monsters hit your opponent, thusly draining them to zero and killing them if you have enough damage to do so. But uh, most of the time there's going to be a scapegoat, there's going to be other effects to protect the, that player. But yeah, the scapegoat effect is really unique. It's a card that's kind of like an enchantment that's for free to play on a creature every turn, and it always goes back to you, and you're always going to be able to play it, and it like, doesn't count towards your hand limit. It's kind of like a, your one wall of protection against your opponent. And it has unique little features as far as how the creatures function. The fact that you're going to be getting a lost soul that has its unique benefit, kind of like a commander would in EDH, that also will let you gather a deck type and then another deck type and put them together. And so you can always choose different deck types even if you have the same uh, lost soul. And you have a forbidden deck too. This is a unique deck that's kind of out of play that you'll be able to gather at certain points in time for certain currency that you might have to spend or if you have um, a character ability that says that you can do so and then you can use that as well. And then the main unique thing about this game as well is you can do things in any order that you want. You're going to be swinging and then you'll switch to placing down something or equipping something and then swinging with another thing. And so you have this kind of freedom to play as much as you want as fast as you want. And because of that, which is the meat and potatoes of the game, you are going to have a lot of instances where you think you're losing and then all of a sudden you can come back. There's combos in this game that pop off randomly um, or as you've kind of built around for your deck, uh, as you've stored up cards and played you know, conservatively, all of a sudden you drop down and bam, now you've got a field that's got some really strong potential and, and that's where it can come into play. Um, this game has a lot of unique combinations that focus on not just the Lost Soul and its power along with the decks you've chosen, but how the decks cooperate with each other. Each deck is going to change the playstyle of the other deck you put it with, and you're, you're never out of the game. Even when you feel like all is lost, suddenly you can come back. The equipment, because they don't simply de leave play, bam, they can be dropped down again. And some of them are free, and you can use those as well. But that might mean that the deck has less powerful creatures in it. And so they're all balanced very properly. When playing this game online, played with the designer and the artist, I believe, uh, it was interesting because I thought I was losing, losing, and I'm like, oh, I'm having trouble. I don't know how I'm gonna come back. It's a snowball effect. It's like magic. Eh, I don't think I can come back. Wait. Here I go, bam, I popped off, I was able to come back, and then I started winning again, and all of a sudden it hit back on me. And so it has that like 
oh, tug of war feel where you're, you're losing the battle and then bam, you come back and it all comes down to that last turn. And that's a really cool function for this type of a game. It's not really much like, like Android Netrunner, but it has the idea of you're not buying packs, you're not going to be associated with having to deal with getting you know new and unique things. It's just all in one game and having all the opportunity to select whatever you want. There's like a drafting phase at the beginning of the game and it plays similar to a lot of games you've already played before. If you are a fan of these TCGs I've been talking about, Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic and et cetera, et cetera, Hearthstone, this has got a little bit of all that together. It's kind of like, in, it's, it's like in a light function feature that shows you everything you need to know. It's, I mean, it's probably a pretty cool game to show people, like this is what TCGs are like, and here are the different types of TCGs, and this is kind of all wrapped up into one. And I, I really like that about this game. I love the artwork, it's very like, weird. It's very bizarre. I mean, if you've seen the Morkborg universe art, which I went into and had to look into, um, it's got this kind of like dark undertones, but it feels good. And I like that. It reminds me of classical magic style artwork. It's not as much uh, like the new stuff, which is very like vivid and bright and detailed and whatnot. This has kind of got that gritty, real dark undertones. The game plays well. You feel like you're gonna lose, all of a sudden you're gonna win, and it has that back and forth feel, which is excellent. And the fact that it comes all together in one box and you can show kind of a player what the world of TCGs and LCGs is like in a box is great. I really, really like this game and I think you'll like it too. The game is currently on Kickstarter and if you're interested in picking up, there is a link down below in the description for you to go ahead and check out the game, A Brazen Crown. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, A Brazen Crown, currently on Kickstarter. Or if you're interested, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. There's tons of great videos for you guys to see. Hitting that notification bell button will let you see more videos of the games that you may or may not have heard of. You can also go ahead and check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Every single weekend on Sunday, we do a live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch, and then usually on YouTube and Facebook depending on what PC we're using. And you can watch us play games literally just like this one whenever you'd like on the weekend. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to giving you the Brazen Crown next time.